Hi, it's Richard here from In The Box Productions. I hope you're having a great day. So let's jump straight into tutorial number seven. So here we're gonna be looking at how I set up my multi-mix bus setup. It's basically I send each group of instruments to its own bus and we limit that so we can control that in the mix and I have a good foundation to build on and I like to control everything so then I don't have any problems mastering. So let's start by just adding colors to these parts that I've added here. The way I like it. Down here we have the boom effects. Uh, that's going to be the same color as the kick, so let's just color that like the kick and then put it up next to the kick in the arrange window. So now let's open up the uh, mixing desk here and let's insert some auxiliary tracks so we go over to options here create new auxiliary channel strip and then we click and that creates a track and then we can do that again and there is a shortcut uh, which is control n so we can just do control n and that would automatically insert the tracks which are a lot easier that way control n again and again so here let's assign bus number one and I'll do all those now and we'll come back. So now that's done. Number eight. Let's bring all these levels up to zero. So now let's name and color these buses. So I'm going to put bass drum here and add the color to the bass drum, the same as the bass drums in the actual arrange window. And then the drums here and the bass blue keyboards green and if we do guitars we do them yellow and of course then the vocals we do pink so that's all. and then we got the effects we do them sky blue and I'll keep this as a as an, an auxiliary effects track where we will send from individual tracks to this effects auxiliary or bus and um, yeah I'll be doing a tutorial on that so here we have the guitar color green for the keyboards rename this drums then bass and then I'll rename all these and come back in a minute so now we're, what we need to do is just go over here and drag across select these by dragging across then we assign these tracks to the bass drum bus do the same with the drums we just pull across to select them and then assign them to the drum bus like so then we have the break on its own here so let's assign that to the drum bus as well like that and then we have the bass the two bass parts let's assign them to the bass bus and then we've got the vocals going to the vocal bus and we don't have any guitars or effects at the moment so we don't need to do that then what I'm going to do is select all the buses like this and then insert the limiter from logic the basic limiter which is quite simple to use in stereo so now what we're going to do is limit each bus to the level that we want it to be so let's have a listen to the kick first So as you can hear, there's a clap with the kick. So I think what we're going to do is separate that onto another track. Yeah. What we're going to do now is uh, create another track. So duplicate that by clicking up here and uh, we're going to separate all that. So what we do is we take the clap and move it down to the track that we duplicated just by pulling that down dragging it select the rest and get rid of that so that's done now on the second track we have the kick and the clap but we need to get rid of the kick so what we do is cut the frequencies of the kick here by inserting a an eq and then getting rid of those frequencies 
like that. And then what we do is we copy the kick under the clap. And that's not flanging, so that's good. Let's compare to that. Yep, sounds the same. So that's great. So let's copy that down. Get rid of this and then copy this down like this. And now we can recolor that to the color of the drums by opening up the uh, color palette and selecting brown. And then we can move the claps down to the drums and rename that claps. So now the regions don't have the same name as the track. So what we need to do is right click on here and then name regions by tracks. And this will automatically name all the regions the same as the track. So that is practical. So that's now looking all nice and clean and in order. So now let's have a listen to the drums together. Oh, okay, so that's sounding good. Let's listen to the kick now as well. Uh, we're going to limit this now to minus 10. And uh, this is probably the most important thing that I do in the mix is I limit all my levels. And uh, this really does help me keep everything in order in the mix so nothing gets too loud and I can, I can work uh, without worrying about things getting too loud. Is it too loud? Not loud enough. I know everything's fixed at the level that they should be. So let's just push this gain up a bit, get it biting here. We don't want it to be too aggressive. If we start pushing it too much, it, it starts distorting. Even though this limiter is pretty good, it doesn't seem to distort much, but we don't want it to be too compressed. Uh, but just get it biting like that. That's perfect. And then let's get the, we set the release to the minimum. And the look ahead, we'll put up to about four and a bit. So then I'll go on to do the drums, the bass, keyboards, etc., etc. And then what I'm going to do now is insert some EQs on the drums, on the bass, and on the voices as well the vocals so I can control the uh, the bottom end of these tracks here you can see I've already got like a a low end cut it's called a high pass filter that's already pre-programmed so let's close all these uh, plugins up so here I'm going to drag across again and insert some compressors Go to the drop down menu and find my compressor. Uh, as you can see here in blue, I've got two mono tracks. So when you, you insert plugins, be careful because if you insert a stereo plugin onto a mono track, it will turn that mono track into stereo and vice versa. It's not too serious. You can just take the plugin off and put the, the right plugin on. But if you forget, then it becomes a problem. So here I have my compressor that I already have saved as a default. We have other compressors in here, which is pretty cool. And I'll be doing a, a tutorial on that soon. Uh, for the moment, let's just uh, use this one and control this sound with this compressor. You can sort the level out on this. Uh, so we have, uh, it's biting a little bit there, so that's good. Not too much compression on that. The threshold, keep it there. Keep the release fast as well. We don't want a slow release. And the attack, we're going to keep it at 50. Because if you, you attack really fast, then it kind of cuts off the beginning, as you can hear here. So let's keep that at 50 to let the transients come through. So that's cool. So I think the level's a bit loud. So let's bring down the input on this and see how that sounds. So here we have the distortion. And what I like to do here is put soft distortion on it because I find that it's uh, it kind of gives it a bit of a color, um, kind of heats it up a bit. I'll be talking more about that in the tutorial on compression soon anyway stop this for now uh, what I like to do here is insert a multimeter on the master bus here so I can see what's going on with my frequencies like so here we can see the bottom end is sitting nicely the top end is sounding a bit aggressive, as you can see here it's quite loud. 
So what I'm going to do now is go into the, uh, the limiter on the drum bus and start working on that. So let's open that up. So let's uh, bring up the gain so we can get a little bit of reduction in the gain reduction here. Bring it down to there. Then put the release as fast as possible. And the output we're going to bring down to about minus nine for now. So here we're at about minus seven. So if I bring this down a little bit more, then we can get this at about minus six. Then that's good for me. But that further when we got the compressor sorted out on each track and uh, we got our levels right and then we can look at that again. So I'm going to go away and, and uh, start checking out the compressors and I'll be back in a minute. So I had a look at the compressors. That's okay for now. Let's have a look at the bass. So I opened up the limiter. Uh, so I've got the output down to minus 10 and on the fader I'm going to put minus 4 to bring the total down to about minus 14. I'll check the release later on. So that's good. So minus 5 for that together and with the drums together it's minus kind of minus 6.8. Not too bad. So here you can see that we got the bass in sitting quite nicely, so that's good. And uh, let me get rid of this here, have a look at the vocal. What I've done with the vocal is that I've limited it, close that, same as the, the rest to minus 10 and then just adjusted on the fader here to minus kind of minus four to give it an overall sort of an overall volume of about minus 14 so I'll leave that for now so we've got this um, break here that needs to be looked at and the pourquoi a vocal snippet as well got a different compressor on this for a change so that's kind of biting nicely for now. Uh, let's put some soft on that. It's a distortion. And uh, maybe look at the EQ. Yeah, right, okay. It's, it's a bit bassy, so let's chop a bit off the bottom end. Uh, put the analyzer on. Yeah, put that on pre, so we can see with the bass. Yeah, there's a lot of sub there, so let's get rid of that. Okay, let's bring that back a bit and listen to that. So yeah, that's sounding okay. Uh, we're at about minus seven there, minus seven point six. So that's leaving me plenty of room for like keyboards and effects and stuff, and the poor choir. We'll look at that later. And uh, let's put the kick back in and see where we're sitting there. So, about minus five, minus four, minus four and a half. Uh, so that's okay, that's great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave comments and I will see you really soon. Ciao.